So if you're like me, you might sometimes get bored of all the meta decks, all the fire decks in today's format, voices, voice, you guys just want to play something new. And one of my favorite play styles is being able to go second, break boards, and OTK. And this deck does exactly that. And the deck that I'm talking about, of course, is Kaiju Horus. It's a new build that I put together that I think is really, really powerful. Kaijus are just really good right now, especially with the voices, voice cards being untargetable, your opponent ending on Appaloosa a lot of times, and being able to break those kind of boards in OTK is just really fun so with that being said i want to show you guys what this deck looks like and how it functions let's get right into today's video so to start things off in the main deck of course we are on three fairy tale luna this is horus kaiju however this is the best normal summon of the deck of course with the kaijus this card synergizes so well because you have the kaiju so we're playing three gamma seal and two godarla we're not playing dolgran do not play dolgran in this format we are in a fire format do not play dolgran but you're playing these ones and the best thing with fairy tale luna is you kaiju your opponent you summon luna you add the kaiju back to your hand you can kaiju your opponent again absolutely insane fairy tale luna is really really good and on top of that on summon it gets to search another one itself and that's really good because it just gets you extra cards in your hand right so fairy tale luna very powerful card as well with these kaijus synergizes absolutely insane and on top of that kaijus are actually really good this format and people i think are very much underrating how good kaijus are and the reason i say that is because Voices Voice is, I would say, the second best deck or the second best archetype in the format because Fire is just one big archetype. So whether you're playing Pure Snake Eye or you are playing the Fire King variants, it doesn't matter, that's Fire. So outside of Fire, Voices is one of the best archetypes, if not the best archetype in the game. And these cards are absolutely insane into that because their cards can't be targeted. However, if you just Kaiju them, that's going to pretty much stop all of their plays and their way to play, right? So that's why the Kaijus are so good in today's format, into that matchup specifically. And into Fire, it's not bad either. You know, you're going to always be able to get over an Appaloosa if they're setting it up or uh, something else that they're setting up right so these cards are always just going to be generically really really good and then we're playing three alpha this card is a card that's going to help you otk if i if you guys didn't realize already this whole point of this deck is to go second break your opponent's boards and you're trying to break any board right whether it's the fire boards the voices boards rogue boards it does not really matter you want to break the boards once you break the boards essentially you're able to otk because you put up such big bodies and if you guys don't know the effect of alpha to special summon itself is not a hard ones per turn so essentially you can summon the alpha use its effect to bounce it and another card your opponent controls and as long as you're opponent controls monsters with more attack than the monsters you control you can summon this again and that's absolutely insane so three alpha very important card it's also a level eight you're also playing the level eight godarla and that's very specific because uh level eights are really important in this deck so three alpha we're also playing three gizmak gizmak is really good in the graveyard for you of course and it's an extender and on top of that it's a big body and if it's on the field you can banish cards from your extra deck to pop cards your opponent controls so it breaks boards it helps you set up your own boards it gets an extra body onto your side of the field really really powerful card three of the gizmak then we are playing of course the horse pack and i want to talk about why kaiju horus makes so much sense so we're playing three imseti one domatef one happy and three king sark so i want to talk about this just a little bit because i think these cards are so well and they synergize so well so of course first things first being able to dump the gizmek with any of these is really powerful because it gets it in the graveyard this can summon itself back out from the graveyard these cards are also really good because they get themselves onto the side of the field and they're all pretty big monsters right like the happy is i believe 24 he's 3000 and this card will gain attack as well but honestly even if it's not just using these to attack and otk your opponent using them to make your rank eight plays is really powerful as well and it's a consistency engine for the deck and said is going to help you draw an extra card domatef depending on the situation also helps you draw cards so this card is really good these cards are really good very much consistency for the deck and it's just really really powerful right so i really like playing these because not only does it help you set up your otk helps you set up your own boards helps you break boards as well which is really nice so that is it for our horus package our kaiju package and kind of our rank eight plays the main thing this deck wants to do like i said is break boards and otk and that's what this deck is does it does it so well it can do it against pretty much any board in today's format and then it can also make boards so even if you're not otking you can make your own boards which is really insane so moving on to the rest of the deck here it is consistent of two things consistency cards cards that'll get you through your deck and be able to get you where you want to be and cards that are going to help you break your opponent's board so we're playing three trade-in of course they're all level eight monsters trade-in absolutely insane card if you have extra insetis for example in your hand you can just trade them away gizmek trade it away it's really really powerful and then once you do that you're setting it up in the graveyard to either special summon it or like you know you're just getting extra cards in your hand that are going to be board breakers and that could be really powerful so three trade in we're also playing two thrust and three talents all right so the reason we're on two thrust and three talents is because you'd actually rather i don't want to say you'd rather draw the talent but 
Thrust is really powerful. However, it's really just getting you to the missing card, right? Whereas Talents is just you easy to use the draw effect. A lot of the time you're going to use the effect to steal your opponent's monster because that's really relevant as well. You can break your opponent's hand as well with this, but that's not as relevant, especially when you're going second. So you're either using it to draw cards or you're going to be using it to take your opponent's monster. So three talent, two thrust. Thrust can also search a lot of the other board breakers that you're going to see that we're playing. So the other board breakers are one change of heart and three mind control. So we're not playing uh, snatch steel. Snatch steel is legal as well, but we're not playing snatch steal. The reason for that is because unlike these cards snatch steel you can't search off of thrust you can search these off of thrust so the really cool thing about thrust is if you open talent mind control you can thrust into change of heart and you can keep going you can even thrust into trade in if you really wanted to so that's really powerful as well so that's why i really like uh how i'm playing it here because it makes it so good and these cards are insane in today's format it's something that people are not playing that i noticed that people are not playing but i really don't understand why yes your opponent's cards if you're playing as voices voice cannot be targeted but again that's what cards like the kaijus and your big monsters are going to help you take care of but these cards over here i mean triple tactics as well if your opponent goes dynamo window and they go that whole shenanigans then triple tactics talent can be live because they can do this you can take because this isn't actually target so you can actually take in that case these guns do target however these cards against the fire matchup if your opponent sets an appaloosa and you just take an appaloosa absolutely insane by the way you're just winning that matchup because now you have an appaloosa and you can do the rest of your combos and they can't do their graveyard stuff because you have an apple at the end of the day right so that's really powerful these are also just really powerful into a lot of other decks because taking their monsters using it for your own link plays and being able to otk with them absolutely insane so i really like these cards right now one slumber it's a card that you can search off of thrust it's also really good in the graveyard so if you do have to pitch this for your horse engine it could be really good as well so this is really powerful i really like the one slumber i didn't want to max out on this because destroying cards in this format is not the best unlike other formats so that's why just the one slumber and then the only hand trap we're playing and this is something that you guys can swap in and out whatever you guys think i really like this hand trap and that's three ghost spell while this deck is actually one of those decks that you want your opponent to make a board because if your opponent passes on nothing all of these cards here are dead right and you don't want your cards to be dead however bell right now is just so good into the labyrinth matchup and into the fire king matchup specifically if you're able to stop their flamberge they're usually going to do flamberge somewhere midway in their combo they're going to have bodies on the board anyway so if you're just able to stop their flamberge it does put them in a really weird position and that's why i thought ghost spell was really really nice it's just the three cards here that the only hand traps i would be playing because you really want to play board breakers you don't want to play hand traps the other card that i would swap these for if you guys want to swap these are imperm imperm is really good because it is a hand trap for you but it's also really good going second as a board breaker right so imperm is a card you can play instead of these i really like ghost spell though i think it's so so powerful and to round out the deck we're playing one monster reborn and one called by the grave monster reborn why are we playing this card absolutely insane card by the way that people are not thinking of and the reason for that is because let's say you're going up against fire they put up a board they put up their full combo they have promethean princess in the graveyard the first thing you can do is just activate monster reborn take the promethean you're taking their promethean they can't use that effect that's removing a layer of disruption when they move that layer of disruption you're also going to be removing a lot of their fire king stuff because you're not going to be able to destroy cards you control or i guess your opponent is not going to be able to destroy cards they control and so for that reason you're shutting out so much of the engine and so much of the disruption just by activating monster reborn and taking your opponent's monster from the graveyard the princess is so good it's also a link three which means if you use it now with any other monster for a link four access code it helps you otk as well so monster reborn low-key very underrated card called by the grave of course is just a really powerful card as well moving on to the extra deck over here you're playing two types of cards you're playing Ixie's monsters because you're going to be making rank eights and you're playing link monsters because you're going to be taking your opponent's cards and linking them away so we're playing the dingirsu of course really powerful uh, rank eight monster over here it's really good just sending your cards your opponent controls you're playing the one number 100 and one number 97 this is kind of like an otk package for you you're also playing the whole harbinger as well because you can do two things you can either make the number 100 an otk if your opponent has like an open board or something or if not you can make hope harbinger with this package as well which is really nice you can also hard make the horde harbinger but you can make it with this package as well so that's why we're playing these three we're also playing the photon lord very powerful card it's one of those things again like i said if you're not able to otk you're going to be able to at least break the board and if you're able to at least break a board you can end on a photon lord you can even sometimes end on both of these and it's like okay I've left my opponent with nothing. I'm ending on a monster negate and a spell negate. At that point, you know, you're going to be winning the game regardless. So these cards are really good. And of course, one Zeus, because we're playing all these guys. Zeus is really powerful as well. Then for Link Monsters, we're playing Hida, because if you take one of your opponent's fire monsters, you guys can make Hida take another one from their graveyard. Really powerful in that sense. Dark, of course, you're playing a lot of dark monsters. Dark is also really good in today's format. IP Mascarena, SP Little Knight, Unicorn, just other like generic Link monsters that you guys can be playing. Because if you're taking your opponent's monsters, you need to link them away. And these are the best ones to do that. You're playing the one bls as well of course you're playing all monsters level seven or higher bls is really good 
Axis Code Talker here is another option, Appaloosa and Mech Knight Crusader Avermax. Just again, Mind Control is not a hard one per turn. So if your opponent ends on two Link Monsters, let's say, you go Mind Control, take one, Mind Control, take the other, use them into this, you're setting up a big body here as well, which is really nice. So just different options for you guys to play. You don't have to necessarily be playing all these, but they're just really powerful cards. And it's just utility generic cards that you guys can always make once you take your opponent's monsters. And if you're not using them, you can always just use them for Gizmec to pop cards your opponent controls. So regardless, these cards I think are just really, really powerful. So moving on to the side deck here, I always want to preface by saying this is up to personal preference, depending on what your locals is like as well. If your locals are all combo players, fire players, you make sure to side for that. However, if it's all backward players, you side for that as well. This is just a skeleton that covers a little bit of everything so you guys can use it. And again, you can always adjust it based off of your preference. So three Nibiru, I think Nibiru is really, really powerful right now in today's format, specifically into the fire decks. This card is really good. It gets you an extra body on board, which is really nice. 3k helps you OTK. And on top of that, it's really easy to get rid of the token if you really need to so three nibiru we're also on three kishtira fenrir now fenrir is really good in the side deck in this deck not so much in the main deck yes there is an argument to main deck this card because it's really good into a lot of the rogue decks however it's not really insane into the fire decks and it doesn't really synergize with all the level eights so for that reason it's really good in the side because against a lot of the rogue decks that you'll see you can always side this card in but it's also a card that's really good going first if your opponent does force you to go first again you never want to go first with this deck but if they force you to fenrir becomes a really good option for you right and then we are playing a ton of back row eight. so we're playing three cosmic cyclone really good card in today's format specifically against the fire decks and against a lot of other decks as well so three cosmic cyclone but we're also playing one harpy's feather duster and two lightning storm now i know this might sound like a lot of back row hate but the reason we're actually playing this many is because it's actually really important that we're able to see this because the main deck doesn't really deal with back row at all you have a lot to deal with front row not a lot to deal with back row on top of that lightning storm is searchable off of thrust throw his duster and on top of that lightning storm is also really good into front row matchups technically as well so this is not just a back row hate card although we usually typically use it for that it's not just a back row hate card right so two lightning storm and then lastly for when you're forced to go first three solemn judgment as well solemn judgment and fenrir if you think your opponent is going to force you to go first you're always siding these six in because it's just really important if you're able to just set up a rank eight monster plus a fenrir plus solemn judgment typically that's enough to survive a turn and then you're going to be able to otk with it but again this side deck is just a preference is just something that covers a little bit of everything and again just use it as a skeleton but change it up based off of how you prefer so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. That is my take on Luna Horus Kaiju. I think this deck is really, really powerful. Again, it's a rogue deck, keep that in mind, but it's a very fun deck to play. Being able to break any boards in OTK, and even if you don't, ending on Photon Lord and Hope Harbinger and some negates is still really, really powerful. Now, if you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel, five shorts, two long videos. That's going to be my deck profiles, combo videos. You guys are going to get product openings, vlogs, all that good stuff. You'll find it right here on the channel. So make sure to subscribe for more. And with that, guys, I appreciate every single one of you. Spinko signing out. Peace.